Welcome everyone to the Kessler Athletic Center. Today, the Canisius College Lady Golden Griffin take on the Niagara Purple Eagles. In this game, it is an inverse of last year's game where Canisius was on top, the number three in the MAC, they, and they end up the season at the number two seed in the MAC tournament. But for this one, Niagara is now third, and uh, the Niagara Purple Eagles, the Niagara Purple Eagles are third, and Canisius are eighth. So it's an inverse. Canisius now on the lose again. For us at Canisius, we have a school pride. We do not want to be behind Niagara in anything. And Niagara this year is led by Liz Flukes forward in this year's game. They are also not that big and not that deep, so if Kenesha's can find a way to get their big to foul trouble, they can do work. As you can hear now, you see it is a pretty good crowd here. The game is live, a special sneak peek that we found out now. Charlie Tinn will be starting for the Lady Golden Griffins, and Dexter is going to give us the keys on how we're going to win today's game. Dexter? What the Lady Griffins need to do in today's game is shoot the three well. They, have, they hold the Division I record of the most consecutive games with a three-point field goal made. And Ellie Radke has been averaging 15-9 and nine the last four games, so we need her to elevate her game today and play big. Anything else, you? Um, I think for this one, it's just all about playing higher intensity. They lost by three. The Lady Griffins did at Niagara. Don't want to lose on your home court. Try to have some kind of momentum going into the MAC tournament and hopefully beyond. But we'll talk to you after the game with Coach Zay, hopefully. If he sticks around for us this time. Hopefully. Hopefully. Here we go. Kenesha's versus Niagara. Women's side. Just a little drive and kick. Open number four for three. Splash. Brittany brings the ball up. Gives it to who else? Ellie. Back to Britt for the layup. All layups are good for Britt. Then now here we go with the driving penetration. That's always a problem. Kicking out the Stokes. Freshman guy from Syracuse. For three. Now we have Tara Lee 10. Pass it to Whitley Eleanor for two. For two. Then Britt, we've seen this play before. A flash and Ellie couldn't really contain her, but just a little give and go, we'll call it. For three, Brittany. For three. We have, oh, pass it to Tara Lee again for another assist. To Whit, again, for two. G double O D, yes, sir. -y. Now Niagara has the ball, just a little drive, another driving kick, penetration out to number four. I thought we saw this already, but here it is another one. No. Now, no. last play. Last play for Niagara, inbounds. Give it to their guard from Syracuse. She faces up Brittany, spin moves. Oh, just, she's just playing with the ball. She has a screen set. Oh, they forgot about number 30. And it's good. Heartbreak Drake. Uh oh, and then here we go, just. We try to get a little desperation. Hopefully, have a little mojo left. So we have 3.9 seconds. Or oh, inbounder from Ellie gets the Ellie gets the inbound pass, is and Britt is it good? Yes, it is. Oh no, it's no, no, it's not good. And Kanisha loses by three. Heartbreak. Hello, viewers. We're here after the Kanisha's versus Niagara game, and it was a tough loss today. Uh, with the Kanisha's woman lost by three points on a pretty much buzzer beater by number 30, Jacqueline. Just, it just was wide open shot, but Dexter's gonna talk to us about what happened that he saw in the negative. So Dexter, what did you see out there today? What I saw today was Ellie Radke. She was supposed to elevate her game today, but unfortunately, she did the exact opposite. She was fouling people when they didn't need to get fouled. She was frustrated and just doing everything that you're not supposed to do as a player. And as far as the team-wise shooting, we shot pretty good. But we didn't make the big stops when we needed it. How about you? Well, you know, I want to play the opposite of the devil's advocate. We're going to go on the positives. Now, Taja, she didn't play really at all, hardly at all. Um, but Whitney Eleanor and Tarly Ten, they both started today's game and were big, I thought, impact players. Tarly had some good moves, scoring, driving to the hole, dishing to her teammates, getting to the basket and creating stuff for others, which is big in what Kanisha's needs when Brittany is on the bench or she's just a little tired and trying to save herself. We need someone else to go to the basket and make things happen. And Whitney Eleanor, now, this is a big little secret. She only goes one way. That's all she did today. Wait, she left. went she went left all day long. And but you know what? It was very successful. You so let's what? guess what? You see Lamar Odom. He's left-handed. He only goes one way, so it can happen. Whitney, but I hope that you could go get a right hand, develop it over the summer. But right now, keep going left. It will definitely work for you. So Whitney Eleanor, Tarleton, I think they can be key contributors going forward. But 
I, I, I feel it right now. It is. It, this is a tough loss right here. Now, they're, more than likely, they're going to fall down uh, to probably the ninth spot. And they have four, three more games to go, two home games. So I guess she's going to try and make something of this one. So. Personally, I would have put Tasia in the game because she's more athletic than any other player that Niagara had on their team. And she would have probably made those key stops that they needed down the stretch. But I guess Coach Jay did, wasn't messing with her this week. She wasn't, he wasn't putting her in the game. It must be something that she did during the week, but who knows? Yep, but I know we will try and get that insight for you and see why she didn't play. And uh, hope you enjoyed these highlights, and we'll see you next week. Good evening, Kenesha's College. We're here for another exciting game between Kenesha's and James Madison, our bracket busters. And today is it's a big game. Day, baby. Senior day for our guard, Frank the Tank Turner and Bobby Bevel Aqua, also known as Bobby Drinks. Bobby and we're Drink. here to tell you about why we think Kenesha should win and why we don't think they're not going to win. So we're going to kick it off with James Madison, their do's and don'ts and what they need to do to win. Got so it. what is it? Well, starting off with James Madison, they here they have a big man, Denzel, number 24, Denzel Bowles, averaging 21 points, 10 real, absolute beast down there. So Greg Logan, Tomas Vasquez, Simmons, Elton Frazier need some good help on him down low. But the thing that's dangerous about James Madison, they also have another big guy by the name of Julius Wells, another forward. Averaging 17 and 8. So you gotta watch out for those big guys down low. But with Kanisha's it's senior day, all about Frank Jake. As you see, Kanisha's running by now. They look intense. Got the headbands going. It's gonna be a great game. All about Frank the Tank. Bobby Drinks, they need a W. So hopefully they play within the offense. And, and Dexter right now tells us what Kanisha's needs to do to be successful in today's game. Dexter talks. Since it's senior day, you know, I'm going to ride Frank Turner for a minute. <laughs> it's Frank. him. Frank Turner is one of three players in the nation that are averaging 15 points, five rebounds, and five assists. And that's Great. phenomenal for him to be at such a small school, to be uh, nationally known like that. And we need him to carry us tonight. We need, us, we need our other players to step up and feed off his fieriness of his passion of winning tonight. We need yeah. another scorer besides Julius Coles well, oh, there to, it is. That's to step up and score. It should be Tomas Vasquez Simmons, hopefully. But you never know where the scoring comes from. So, what do you think? Yeah, I think you hit it up right on the head. Um, the scoring has to come from someone else. Tomas may be looking at it, but we will see. We're gonna check out the Golden Griffins as and they go up for a nice win. And another key thing, we need our C block to step up. We C gave them a buff, we gave them a buffet today. They should be bellies full and ready to cheer. So we should be good. And we'll talk to you later, CC TV. Yeah. Starting off the highlights, Julius Weiss for James Madison had a pretty good game. One of his nice highlights just coming off a fake screen. Oh yeah, just a cross back for three splash. And we have our Golden Griffs playing a little defense. Look at senior guard drinks D and up, D and up. Give me that. And, you know, defense turns into offense if you push the pill fast enough. And our senior guy, Frank, kicks it up to Jake Coles. He bump, shoot it, but springs himself. Elton dunks it all on everyone. And then here we go. Now, James Madison is trying to push the ball. And, oh, look at the fake. Frank is all the way by the stands on this special day on senior day for three, Weiss. And look, oh, Greg, for three, no good. But Frank the Tank strips, hustle. passes to Jake Coles for the lay-in, two. And then, oh, now Frank just now, just look how just smooth this young man is on his senior day. Oh, a little crossover. Nice. No look. Ellie, oh, Ellie Frazier. Oh. Then we have my man Frank back to Tomas. Oh, look at it. To drinks. Senior to senior connection. You know why? Because it's senior day. And it's all about the seniors. There it is. And now here goes Sienna versus Kanisha. Nice shot. Julius Cole for three. And we have you Billy's going baseline. Jabs the. Oh, finds my man. Watch out, b -Lo. And then here you go, Rossiter. Gonna just run in the floor. Look at the big man run and finish. And one. Got him, coach. We have Frank looking for my man Drinks. Back to, oh, Drinks. To my man Tomas Vasquez Simmons. For three, for three, for three. Then out. Sienna running up and down the court. Ronald Moore with the ball. Just an easy pass. Out. No, get that out of here, says 42 Tomas. Tomas. 